Federal Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen expected to be grilled Wednesday on Capitol Hill. This hearing coming after the Fed did not raise interest rates last week. There's a real split within her ranks on taking action now. I spoke with Jeffrey Lacker, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, who said he continues to push for rates to move higher. I thought the case was strong this past week uh, for another increase. Given how tight labor markets are, given how close we are to our inflation target, um, our benchmarks point to interest rates that are substantially higher than they are now, and I think we need to get on with it. What are they seeing that you're obviously not seeing? I mean, why has it been so difficult to raise interest rates? We know that savers are being punished. They have money in their savings accounts. They're not getting any yield on it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we've seen really strong employment growth um, from uh, the beginning of this recovery in 2010. And uh, it looks as if labor markets are fairly tight right now. Uh, there's a lot of widespread reports of uh, firms that are having f trouble finding skilled workers. Uh, there's clear evidence of wage pressure wage rates are accelerating they're picking up pace uh, it's not uniform uh, to be sh sure there are individuals whose experiences are very different uh, and because there's been a profound change in this economy there's been um, a, a real shift in the skills that that businesses demand so some people's experience isn't isn't great uh, but I, on a whole, the whole, and that's how we have to judge monetary policy, um, labor markets are fairly tight. And when they get tight, interest rates need to rise to keep uh, imbalances from arising. Now, uh, in fairness to my other colleagues, um, the other point of view is that uh, we need to explore and, and, and find out whether there's a chance uh, that um, we can make la labor markets even tighter without sparking inflation. I think the evidence on that um, is mixed, and I'm, I'm troubled by where we are right now. So let's talk about where the strength is, where the growth is. We're all mm -hmm. looking for growth in this country, right? Mm -hmm. and, and where the weak spots still remain. Because I know that the business segments, people, businesses are sitting on cash. They are unwilling to, you know, put new money to work. They've got all this money overseas. Is that a regulatory issue? Is that a demand issue? How do you see this inability of business to invest in CapEx? That's a really good question. Um, capital expenditures, investment in new plant and equipment and intellectual property intangibles has been relatively soft and stagnant for the last couple of years. Part of that is what's going on in the oil and gas sector with the fall off in uh, drilling activity, but that's uh, bottomed out um, and uh, there's a broader weakness. Some of it is uh, perhaps related a little bit to the strength of the dollar and, and a lack of export demand, but that doesn't seem to be all of it either. There's something broader going on. Uh, this. Uh, is important because uh, capital expenditures are what lead to productivity growth, uh, growth in the output per worker uh, that we see in our economy. And ultimately, real incomes for Americans are tied closely. They track closely with productivity growth. There are a couple of theories about why productivity growth is low. One is that we measure it poorly. There's something to that, but that doesn't seem to explain it all. Uh, another theory is that we've run out of good ideas. That seems implausible to me, but it could be. Um, another theory is that the wave of regulatory um, uh, things that have come along in the last couple of years, last decade or so, um, are swamping American businesses, discouraging business formation, and discouraging investment. I think there's, I give that some credence too, but we, we don't have the ability to quantify these and really sort them out right now. Well, so there is, there is a there's pushback. There's some uncertainty about it. I'm sorry. There mm -hmm. is a pushback because of Dodd-Frank, because of uh, Obamacare, because of EPA regulations. The businesses are feeling that they don't know what's around the corner in terms of regulation. So why would I go invest in this now? Let me wait to see what's happening. Now, you just made an important point, I think, that I think viewers really care about, and that is, are you out of ideas? I mean, you know, you look at what's mm -hmm. going on internationally. You've got these international central banks going to negative interest rates. People are saying there's not much more a central bank can do. Mm -hmm. Is there? I, I think we got more credit when the economy was going really well in the 90s uh, than we deserved. Right. Uh, our job was to keep inflation low and stable. We did a good job of that in the 90s, but uh, the tech boom wasn't our responsibility. We didn't bring that about. Similarly, I think we, we get more blame for a sluggish recovery than we deserve. There really isn't anything monetary policy can do about the rate of productivity growth, uh, the rate of capital formation uh, that goes into that. And so we're doing the best we can. We're keeping inflation low and stable. I think we've done a good job since the recession ended and uh, people need to realize that uh, there's a, a, a range of policy out there. Uh, we're responsible for a narrow slice of economic policy, just what affects the inflation rate. Is it likely we'll see a rate hike in December? Um, I think the case is going to be strong based on what I see now, but there's some more data to come in between now and then, so we'll see.
special thanks to Richmond Federal Reserve President Jeffrey Lacker there.